Hey everybody, it's Tracy from Science Buddies. Today I'll be teaching you about thresholds in machine learning and how they play a crucial role in classification tasks. When you're at the end of a neural network of a binary classification model, it will output a number 0 or 1. That represents the data point being one class or another. But how does the network decide whether it will classify a data point as one or the other? The answer lies in the activation function and threshold. The activation function is applied to the output of each neuron that helps the network decide whether the neuron should be activated or not. While there are many activation functions, we'll be using sigmoid in our example. Let's say we have a data set of face images because we are creating a model for a face recognition system. It consists of images that matches an individual and images that do not match them. In our top row here, we have the face that we want to identify and each of the images is a face that matches the person. In the bottom here, we have faces that do not match the face of the person we want to identify. The x-axis here represents a kind of similarity score to the face we are identifying. The more to the right a data point is, the more similar it is to the face we are identifying. And the more to the left a data point is, the more dissimilar it is to the face that we are identifying. If we want to predict whether new inputs match the individual or not, we can first apply our activation function. To the left of the graph, we can see the probability that a face matches or not, with 1 meaning the face definitely matches and 0 meaning the face definitely does not match. To see the probability of each data point matching the face, you choose the point where you want to check and go directly up until it reaches the activation function. Then you go directly to the left. And here it looks like there is a 0.2 or 20% chance that this face matches the one in the system. Similarly, we can choose a point up here and go directly down until it reaches the activation function. Go directly left and we can see this point has a roughly 0.8 or 80% probability that it matches the one in the system. However, we want the model to output its actual predictions, not probabilities. And this is where the threshold comes in. We can set the threshold to anything we want between 0 and 1, but let's start with 0 0.5. To use the threshold, we'll classify anything above the threshold as a match and anything below the threshold as not a match. Let's step through each of the points one by one. Remember that we already know whether the face matches or not, but we're going to see if the model will be able to tell as well. For this first point, we'll go up until it reaches the activation function, then go directly to the left. Since the probability of this point being a match is less than the threshold of 0.5, the model will classify this point as not a match, which would be correct. We'll do this for the next point too, going up then to the left and classifying it based on whether it is above or below the threshold. Let's watch the animation for the next two points. We can see so far that our model has been accurate in identifying all the points so far, but what happens to the next point? We'll go up, then to the left, and since this point is actually above our threshold of 0.5, the model will actually identify this face as a match, even though it is not. This may happen if a face is similar to the one in the system, but it is actually not a match. We can see the model make another mistake here as well where it will identify the face as not a match when it really is. Let's watch the rest of the animation. As we can see, the model did quite a good job at classifying each face as a match or not a match, although it wasn't perfect as it made two mistakes. Now, two mistakes may not seem like a big deal, and it may not be in some cases. For instance, if you're creating a model that classifies an animal as a dog or a cat, maybe it's okay if the model is not 100% accurate. However, if the model you create is classifying cancer tumors as benign or malignant, the cost of misdiagnosing is much greater. Therefore, you would want the model to catch all of the positive instances, even if that may mean increasing the rate of false positives. If you want to make the model more picky, you can increase the threshold. It reduces the chance of false positives, but it might miss some cases. On the other hand, if you want to make the model more lenient, you can decrease the threshold. 
It catches more real cases, but may also increase the rate of false positives. In our case, if we are making a facial recognition system, we want to make sure that it can distinguish between the user and other people. But we don't want to make it so strict that it would not allow the user to gain access if there is a change in their appearance, such as a change in lighting or a change in hairstyle. Threshold is something you may have to adjust for each project, depending on whether you want to prioritize correctness or ease of use. You can also learn about certain techniques, such as ROC with AUC, which help you determine a threshold value as well. But that's for another video. And with that, we reach the end of the video. Remember that you can find written instructions and example code for this project linked in the video description. For over a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.